Hey friends, I promised last week that I would do this. Uh, vocal rest is just about done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this now um, and just spend a few minutes with you here talking about LinkedIn. Uh, several of you have asked about, okay, so I'm thinking about going a different direction than ministry, but what does that even look like? How do I tell people what I do well? So I wanna take a few minutes here to show you my LinkedIn profile and show you a little bit about how I have uh, described, um, translated, maybe is a better word, uh, some of my experiences in ministry. Now, keep in mind, associate and executive work is really more of my side. So we'll talk a little bit about how to translate what uh, maybe if you've been a senior minister, uh, what that might look like. OK, so I'm going to do a screen share and then we'll get started. Okay, I'm now sharing my screen and you can see this is my LinkedIn profile. Uh, I've been out of ministry long enough that I've got several different things here uh, that uh, have developed in time and which you'll develop in time as, as, uh, as it becomes uh, appropriate. So I'm actually gonna take you over to the homepage first here. Um, this is the LinkedIn homepage, and you'll see that it looks a lot like just any other social media feed. Um, there's a couple of things here that I want to show you that are super important places to start. Um, the most important thing is you need to make connections, okay? That's the most important thing you can do. So we're going to do a search up here, and what you can see here is there are all kinds of folks here uh, that... Um, are part of my network, uh, recent additions. And all you want to do is you just want to start by looking for, and I'm going to search for myself. Uh, you can see that there are a couple of different Trey Finleys here. I'm at the top, of course. Um, and part of that is because I've spent a lot of time uh, cultivating that so that I will get noticed. That's a long-term project. Don't worry about that for yourself at the moment. Um, and you can see here that there are quite a few other people. So I'm just going to click on this Trey Finley because clearly this is the second best Trey Finley. Uh, if I wanted to connect with Trey, um, I would simply do uh, for this person a message. And the message would give me an opportunity um, to uh, connect with them if they're close enough. So this person is not quite close enough. So I would have to have a paid account. The paid account is, uh, in my opinion, not super helpful, um, but we will wait to hear from a couple of folks who uh, are doing hiring right now about the value with that. I suspect it's a little more valuable for folks who are actively looking to find a job. So we'll see if we can find somebody who can do a second level uh, connection for us. Um, uh, you can see a couple of folks here. I'm going to try someone that I know is uh, we're going to do Scott. Uh, all right. So here is someone in my um, connection that I have with my Enneagram group, and I need to connect with them. So I'm going to hit connect, and I can add a note to personalize my invitation. So I'm going to add a note. There are a ton of people who just connect for the sake of connecting, and they don't add a note. It's a really good uh pretty good uh, thing that will tell you that you uh, probably don't necessarily need to connect with them. I also want to say, hey, Scott, connecting here on LinkedIn, enjoying being with you in the Enneagram cohort. And I'll hit send. So that's the first thing you want to do is you want to search for people you already know on LinkedIn and connect with them. This is something you can do now, even if you're not looking for a ministry position yet, or you're not sure if you're going to uh, transition or not. I encourage you to go ahead and whether you've got a great profile or not, I mean, we can just be honest about Scott here. He doesn't have a super up-to-date profile. That's fine. Um, but we, we can go ahead and begin to connect with a lot of people who are in our churches, and I strongly recommend that you do that. Uh, it's just a nice, easy place to start. Should the time come where you're leaving ministry, if you haven't already, should the time come, this is a place where you can ask for introductions to people connected to jobs that you may want. 
Uh, that's LinkedIn 201 or 301, so we're not going to worry about that today. Step one, connect with people you already know. All right, I'm going to go back over here to our LinkedIn, our LinkedIn main feed. Um, you will see several things here that may be helpful for you. I'll just do a real quick one. Several of you have asked about taught about uh, LinkedIn learning. Uh, LinkedIn does have that. If you can see my uh, cursor over here on the right hand side, LinkedIn does have some opportunities to learn uh, and add what they call badges to your um, to your profile. These are helpful insofar as you will see people uh, who would like to hire you through LinkedIn. They'll notice that you've done that. Does it have a lot of continuing education value or academic value? Uh, no. Is it as powerful as, say, uh, you know, any sort of uh, online uh, organization uh, that provides some of these e-learning opportunities? No. But it's not a bad thing to do. They're all pretty easy. They can be done quickly. It shows that you're active. So that's the second thing I would show is number one, just to review, make connections. Number two, take a look through those courses. And I'll show you um, on that LinkedIn learning here real quick before we go back to my profile. Uh, it is a paid service, um, but you can see lots of fun things in here that are helpful. Um, staying positive in the face of negativity, uh, mindful team building. Uh, you'll also see a number of different uh, resources on bias. Uh, you'll see time management and productivity super, super prevalent here on LinkedIn. Um, and so you'll, you'll see several different things here. Find one you like to do. It is paid, but it also is a great way to show folks that <clears throat> you are doing the work to build a good, a good profile and demonstrate that you are very interested in topics that will matter to uh, someone who's hiring. Okay, back to the profile. So number one is uh, make sure that you are connecting with people you already know. Number two is take a peek at the learnings. Uh, you may find something helpful there. Uh, and if you do, don't hesitate to jump in. Let's look at your profile. Uh, you will see several things. Uh, I'll, I'll walk through kind of top to bottom. First is kind of a header photo. Um, this can be a great way for you to describe visually what you do. So uh, let me give you an example. If you are a, a preaching minister, uh, show yourself speaking to a lot of people uh, publicly. Uh, if you are an executive minister, show yourself in a team building setup. Make sure these are actual people, not just stock photos. So you may need to get a couple of pictures or borrow a couple of pictures, but this is a great way to show in a nutshell what it is you do. 1128 is really focusing on celebrating and empowering women right now, especially women in ministry, of course. And so that's at my uh, that's my heading up there, showing some of the women that we work with. Uh, obviously, you'll, you'll want to have a <clears throat> excuse me a very good uh, a very good personal picture here uh, there on the left. Make sure it's high resolution. Uh, recent is best. Uh, it needs to be, if possible, a professional headshot. So think about the think about the photo you've got on your website, on your church's website. Um, let's uh, scroll down a little bit further. Uh, the dashboard, if you want to take a look at it, you can. Excuse me, I forgot about this right here. Um, in a nutshell, what are you about? So under my name here, you can see caring for the souls of those I come in contact with creating space for soul care providers to do more of their vital work. If you could describe what it is that you do best and what's most important to you uh, in a sentence or two, that's where you put it. Um, it'll take time. Don't worry about making it super specific, but it may be something like communicating what matters to people who are interested or to people who are willing to listen working with people to equip them to do what they do exceptionally well. Um, look for some of those. If you need some suggestions, don't hesitate to pop onto other people's uh, profiles and see what they do. You'll see a few different ways to do that. Um, I personally like this narrative approach of two sentences that describe it well. All right, scrolling on down to the next thing you can work on. 
Um, I encourage you to do this about section. It's a longer setup that just describes you. Um, so you can you can see here I talk a lot about life and vocation, which is very important to me. Uh, those are two things that have been themes throughout my career and throughout honestly my entire life. Um, what I do has been very closely tied to who I am, better or worse. I know that who I am is is God's uh, beloved, most importantly. But in this setting, because this is what matters to people who are looking through, I want to frame it in terms of life and vocation. What is your vocation? Not just your job, right? Not just I'm called to be a minister, but what is it about ministry that is your vocation? So for me, uh, it was a description about my story of how I came into ministry, but also how I left and found different ways to do that. Um, so you'll see in that second paragraph, I've learned a few things about myself. Being a public face isn't truly who I am. I'm an educator and a planner who loves to be in the background watching others thrive. That's it. If I could put it in a sentence, in that second paragraph, I'm an educator and a planner someone who loves to be in the background watching others thrive. That's it. Um, everything else is kind of an expansion on this. So I encourage you to think about a two to three paragraph uh, description of you that really describes who you are vocationally in a way that uh, other people will understand. This may take some time. Stay away from I preach. Um, even though that's true, think in terms of preaching as public speaking. Think in terms of Bible class teaching as small as small group facilitation. Instead of uh, instead of volunteer leadership, talk a lot about the teams you led and how many people you work with in an organization. Um, the volunteer side of it will be, of course, very helpful if you go the nonprofit route. But if you go more of the, uh, the business or government route, then the volunteer work will be less important than being able to communicate how you work with teams and how well you work with teams along the way. So just to scroll back up to the top. Visually, you want to make sure that you've got a picture that describes what you do in a snapshot, a literal snapshot. Number two, make sure you've got a good uh, professional picture. Number three, describe in a sentence or two who you are. Um, verbs, by the way, on LinkedIn, very important. LinkedIn likes verbs. People on LinkedIn like verbs. Again, you and I know that life is more than verbs. The soul and the spirit are more than verbs. But in terms of communicating who we are, in terms of speaking the language of LinkedIn, that's super important. All right, let's scroll down a little further and get into the, the nuts and bolts of the experience. You'll see that I've had several jobs since ministry, and those are pretty straightforward and understandable. But let's go down here to my work in ministry and take a look at what we did here. You'll notice a couple of things. Number one, I did not include every ministry job I've done. Uh, I did a lot in student ministry over the course of the better part of seven or eight years. Uh, I did not include them here, and here's why. They were not relevant to my work and my personal description of myself, uh, they weren't relevant to that personal description as it would relate to people who might hire me. So adult discipleship and leadership development uh, is still pretty churchy, especially that first one. Uh, if I'm looking at it now, I might change that to uh, adult learning uh, and leadership development. That's probably a better way for me to put that. Um, adult learning and leadership development. And you'll see that in the, uh, the years, I've got uh, the leadership development side of it and kind of the uh, how long I did it, as well as for the churches I did it with. Um, but also, now you'll begin to see after that some of the things that I did that I knew would be of interest either to nonprofits that I uh, looked into before taking on the role at 1128 or in businesses. So you'll see um, there's a couple of things here. Um, take a look at the first one. I was a small groups minister and associate minister uh, and uh, as well as an executive team member. 
And so I framed it in terms of training, instructional design. That's a really great term uh, if you're looking for work in HR and people development uh, areas, which, by the way, any pastor worth their salt who can understand the different ways that people learn, which I know vast majority of ministers do. That's such a critical part of being a minister and help people retain and be changed by the information they receive. Instructional design and HR and people development could be a really good fit for you. Okay. So instructional design for multiple age groups and learning environments that communicates uh, to the people development uh, side of business. Here's the next one. Uh, this comes back to my uh, experience on the executive team, uh, leadership skills, conflict management, personal development, leadership is a critical part of that. And then I included as well the oversight of the deployment of a thousand plus volunteers, uh, especially for nonprofits who will be interested in that. So uh, think in terms of the language of leadership development, conflict management, instructional design, uh, think in terms of uh, deployment and team building, uh, of working with, uh, working with uh, different size groups with different purposes. Describe that in as, in as detailed a way as you can. Um, and again, I would go with adult learning and leadership development. I will make that change when I'm done with the video. All right. This is one on one, so I'm going to stop here uh, rather than uh, go too much further. I'll just say uh, education, be straightforward. Don't try to translate that. Here's your education. Here's what you learned. Um, if you if you want to do a little bit of tweaking on that, go for it. Um, but I would just say, you know, look here, be that's a place where you can say this is who I am. This is how I was trained. And I think that'll be helpful for you. There's a volunteer experience down here as well, if you'd like to do that. Um, we're going to get into more of that work, but until you get a chance to really build your profile and connect with people, um, the rest of it is not really going to fall into place. So I'll do another video on, the, on that kind of LinkedIn 201 later on, but I would encourage you, no matter where you are in the process of leaving or not leaving your church, I would encourage you to go ahead and do all of that to fill it out. Uh, if you need a little bit of help or you have questions about it, tap me on the shoulder via direct message or via email or by cell phone, whatever works, whatever best for you. Uh, and I'll be happy to give you some suggestions uh, or coach you through a little bit of that. You guys, um, I want to do more of this now that my voice is back. Um, I will do more of this for you on a more regular basis. Um, and again, uh, keep an eye out for all the cohort work that we're beginning. I'd love to get some more of you guys and, and women, sorry, women and men in that. We've got several of both in this group. Uh, and invite you to be a part of that as a way to continue your process of healing, uh, not just re-equipping, but finding a way to integrate um, the experiences you've had in leaving ministry in a way that will be healthy, uh, in a way that will allow you to thrive in whatever God has in mind for you next.